Maybe hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. You're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. We'll see something cool. I got a radiator. I was having a hard time finding a really small pinhole leak. So I'll show you what I did. I thought I'd show you how I'm going to make this tool or whatnot. I'm just going to take a valve stem. I don't necessarily need the valve stem in there if I'm going to supply a constant pressure. But if I wanted to, uh, let's say, pump up this plug to the 16 PSI and then just walk away and not have to rely on leaving like an, an airline hooked up to it, I think that might be cool. So as of right now, then that would work on some like some really, really hard to find slow leak or something. But I'm going to go ahead and make this with a valve, uh, a tire valve stem. This is just out of a tube that uh, was a junk tube I cut apart. And if I want, I can always take that center core out and then put a hose or rubber blow gun or something on this. So I just took the same tube, made a couple little gaskets for top and bottom. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. I'm thinking of uh, mounting it through here because it's already hollow, and then I could squeeze this around the edge of that uh, radiator. Uh, I lose a little bit of the flexibility on sizing, so I was kind of thinking about this tapered plug to where then I could just use a small piece of radiator hose clamp to the, the nipple on the radiator and then this side on the tool. And because of that range, it might give me a little more flexibility of the tool. So I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. But this is how it's going to come together, like I said, so that I can put air on it, plug up the radiator, and test it. Let's just look at the radiator real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So obviously, I already got this side plugged. I think I'm leaking somewhere in here. This is where I'm going to put my tool and whether I use the little Mighty Vac and just manually pump it up to 16 PSI, or I could take and uh, use a blowgun on a regulator and just send constant 16 PSI that way. Uh, realistically, the more I think about it, it's going to be better to, to go ahead, leave the valve core in. I could blast 16 PSI to it and walk away, or could pump 16 psi and i can let sit and just look for the leak now if it's a really fast leak that's going to be more attractive because i don't have to pump and i can just constantly supply and then i'd want to take um no i could leave actually i could leave the uh, valve core in there yeah that's pretty cool i think that's what i'm gonna do that's what i'm gonna do Yahoo! glad i used the inner tube let's make this okay here we are we're all set up we got one side plugged we've got some test water to make it bubble to really show it. And then I've got my valve core on here. I've tested this, so this is actually pretty cool because I can go ahead here and put this on here and then control it with just this tire gauge. Okay, so we got, we got air pumped in there. And then what I can do, I can show you, get in there. Can actually see right where it is. So somewhere in between those fins right there, I can actually even still fill it. I'm really happy with my tool though. Let's see if the tool's leaking. Nope. Yep, tool's leaking too. Look at that. Let me show you how I fixed that leak. more bubbles. The washer helped. God dang it. It's a pretty cool way to positively identify uh, where a leak is so I can quit uh, wasting any time on anything else. 
All right, friends, there you have it. Uh, just a little update on what's coming up. Uh, we got uh, Mighty Vac sponsored the channel, and we've got a bunch of their different cooling system tools for automotive and motorcycle applications, obviously starting with a motorcycle. But the cool thing is we are also going to be able to give one away to a member. So we've got a contest going right now. Uh, for a free tool giveaway. We already got one lined up for the next one. And uh, I did a full video beginning to end of the diagnostic process to find coolant leaks on this RC51. And it, I thought we were gonna get lucky with some uh, hoses got really close but the thing is once we fixed one leak another one developed once we fixed another one then this showed its ugly head so the only way to do it is to do it right but these mighty vac tools uh this is a really awesome priced for the do-it-yourselfer uh we do have the um automotive one as well uh which is more traditional i'm used to using but this thing is freaking awesome because it comes with all the adapters to not only do uh, the the system on the motorcycle, but check this out. It also comes ready to go with the adapter to do caps. So I'm going to be showing you how to actually test caps. It worked out really well. This one had a bad one. So between, uh, sh <laughs> think of everything that's getting fixed on this motorcycle. So bad cap meant that it wasn't allowing to put the pressure in the system to let the antifreeze do the job it needs to do. RC51s are like known for overheating as well, especially in s slow traffic conditions. So we had a cap that didn't work, which lowered the boiling point of the coolant. We had an empty reservoir, uh, and I'll show you how I even clean this in the ultrasonic and vapor blaster. That thing was nasty, but empty. The radiator was low. It wasn't by any means empty. So fortunately, the owner caught this at a good time and decided, hey, I need to park this thing and need to fix it. The motorcycle may seem significantly uh, tore down right now, too. It's it's just the way this needs to happen. Technically, you can perform the test with the lower still on, but you do have to take the upper off, which is kind of backwards to most motorcycles. Usually, you're taking the lowers off and then the upper. So, uh, really important for us thinking about reminding you, follow the service manual so you don't waste a lot of time. So, once we did the test, we discovered we needed to tear more body work off to keep going. We're going to talk about all the ins and outs of how to properly test uh, for coolant leaks, not only test on the motorcycle, but also I do some really cool tricks and tips on how to test the tool. Uh, when I do get this thing back together, I have one other tool I got here recently that I'm going to be trying out, and it's the spillless funnel, they call it. So we got cool stuff uh, going on, coming up, all that. Been busy, uh, rocking and rolling. There's a lot going on in, uh, in the shop here at, at How to Wrench, uh, only in here on the weekends now. So. so you saw all these tools on the bench, and you just couldn't help yourself. You're like, I want a little close-up. I want to know what's going on there. So... This one I've I've never used in my life. It's an evacuation air evacuation kit. Super super stoked to check this out. The truth I haven't even opened it, so why don't we just uh, get a little sneak peek? Um, read about this a lot over the years in the automotive industry as being a pretty popular uh, procedure. Like I said, on the auto side. So typically on the motorcycles, we leave the cap off, blip the heck out of the throttle, uh, burp all the air out that way, and uh, Auto people always made a big deal about that. Like I said, the free giveaway one. This one here is a, a bunch of different uh, adapters for numerous different domestic and Asian cars. So you're going to take this kit. This is like the one that I, I called the traditional one earlier where uh, you have just the cylinder that you're going to pump up. It's, I'm sure, a lot faster than the little handheld one. Um, but this is more for the pro that's doing uh, this type of testing all the time. And then you can see that there's a quick release fitting um, to attach up to the different caps, which are all these caps as well. On the motorcycle one, uh, hey, you're, you're, you're pay you get what you pay for type thing. So this one, it like says more what I would call the do-it-yourselfer. And you have to unthread this and take this hose and then re-thread it on here. No big deal. Not the end of the world. But... For the pro, doing it day in and day out, that's why you would go to um, a kit like this. And then, what do we got here? This one here, you know what? That is just a bigger version of the handheld one where do-it-yourselfer that you could do a bunch of different automotive uh, applications. Now, once again, these are all going to be a price point you know, deal, right? So... 
Well, that's what I always used to have to have to test caps. Um, but this is way cool. So we have just Japanese motorcycles, uh, a do-it-yourself automotive kit, a professional kit, a bunch of different adapters, and that cool evac um, air, air evacuation kit. So we, we got some stuff to learn, too. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, the RC51 turned out to be a great uh, project for this because... Like I said, once we fixed one leak, more and more showed up. And then um, the fact that the, the this video where I made this tool or this adapter here was just simply because it was being crazy, crazy small. Now, you may have seen a video, which coincidentally I did years ago, probably like 10 years ago, if we have old fans of the channel, where I showed how you could find uh, coolant leaks with the good old-fashioned, let's see if I have any out here. I'm looking for baby powder, or I'm looking for my little can of aerosol athlete's foot powder. It might be out on a bench. Oh, wait, I got it. No, that's not it. Anyway, another way that you can do it is clean the suspected area really well, and then uh, you can make it really messy like an OVO and get baby powder all over the place. And then when you put the uh, tester on there and you pressurize it, uh, the baby powder from that, you know, green or pinky antifreeze or whatnot will really show itself by getting wet. And that's a way for you to, to pinpoint exactly where to. I guess the point of what I'm getting at is there are a lot of different ways to uh, tackle this job. And uh, the, the tools sure make it really easy. And there's some stuff that's not included in the kit. And that is knowledge and a bucket of water and some soapy water anyway i'm just having some fun so thought i'd throw us a little bit in at the end of the video we're looking forward to doing some uh some videos here for mighty back so stay tuned Did you hit that subscribe button yet you better uh appreciate everything you do for being a subscriber to the channel especially the members that have joined and found that as a way to support the channel thank you so much i'm gonna get at it so as always please like share subscribe join the channel support us make it a great day and as always keep wrenching my friends Thank you.